here with the national champion Springfield College Pride, Charlie Sullivan, Mike Pelletier, Greg Falcone, and Keaton Peeper. Coach, just won the inaugural national championship. Can you just talk about today's match? Yeah, our guys were uh, pretty uh, focused out there, pretty dead on what they were doing. Um, played together, played hard. Uh, they believed and executed. I thought it was uh, a great match for Springfield College, and I thought they were, they were quite awesome. Could you talk about the uh, 15 second uh, set when you're up 23 18? They made a run, and, yeah. and what made the difference down the end of that? Well, we, I thought we got a little tight. Maybe we showed some nerves in the match. Um, our service team just broke down slightly. And uh, Hanson was back there, and certainly bringing his heat. It's quite impressive that in a tight situation that uh, he didn't hold back at all. He went 100%. And uh, he put pressure on us, and the blocking D was great for like three or four rounds there. But uh, we were able to hang on there and uh, persevere, and that was, that was probably a, quite a turning point for the match overall. I just want to ask about uh, Angel Perez. He's a freshman, and he probably played his best game of the tournament tonight. I just want to talk about what it's like to see a young kid like that have that type of composure in this type of a big game. Uh, since day one, Angel has come in, and he has shown that composure and that professionalism. We walked out of his first open gym saying, what can this kid can't do? What can he do? It, it, I mean, he was just unbelievable. He robbed the gym, but what was more impressive was how after he failed, he didn't put his head down. He encouraged the team to keep going, keep going. And um, that really helped us this year a lot. When we were down, you know, they made that big run in the second game. Angel's right there telling us, you know, focus on the next point, focus on the next point, go harder. And um, he was a really, really big help tonight for sure. Keaton, you guys will finish the season as the top hitting team in the country. Finish the match hitting 412 tonight. Can you just talk about how you're able to run the offense this season, and especially today in a, in a big match, uh, you ran the team to perfection? Um, well, I give a lot of it to our passing. I have loved our passing all season. The past three days have been amazing. Passing's been awesome. Um, Coach Birch and Coach Sullivan have really just helped me to know kind of offense run against what defense. And these guys put the ball away. So they make my job easy. And against Carr, they're just not, a, not an easy thing to do. Great defensive team. They get everything up. But just today, we were able to get the ball down. Uh, Keith, now I want to talk about uh, Nick Ferry, especially, I think, first set and probably even the second. Um, was like it was incredible. Um, it just that that seemed even though you lost some points, it seemed to really give you guys a lift and almost demoralize uh, Carthage at times. Oh, definitely. Nick is I don't never gives up. Nick will fly. Th he gives his body up every single play. So he'll go into the bleachers, save a ball for us. And that picks everyone up. It picks our fans up today, the team up, and it really gets us going. That's what helped, us, especially when Carthage is making that run. Ralph, I thought that today was the best three sets of passing we had all season. It was quite a good time for that. Carthage is a great serving team, and uh, they bring it back there, and they have a couple guys doing some different things, so it keeps you off balance a little bit. But uh, I've never seen this team pass so effectively for three games in a row. Uh, all season long was our best performance. You can talk about, I believe it was your uh, a kill, and it was 21-14 uh, in the last match that you know just sort of felt like the nail in the coffin for them. You know, got the, uh, got the crowd going. Angel. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a play that we don't run very often. You know, it kind of brings the block in. But I don't know, we just felt it. Feel at the right time we ran it. Angel was there perfectly. It was a great pass. And I, it just helped us. I have to interject again because sometimes Coach Birch runs the offense for us. He's done a phenomenal job all season. Brian mentioned we're leading the country in hitting percentage. And sometimes Keaton runs the offense, so they kind of collaborate together. But that was Keaton's idea. And uh, Coach Burst said, great idea. And then Coach Burst said, watch this. And uh, it played out to perfection. So that was, uh, that was our freshman setter being really cognitive and uh, really paying attention to the match. From an emotional standpoint, guys, a couple of you talk about what this means to you, what the national champion is serial, is in my field time. What, what are your emotions about this? Uh, I feel blessed. I don't think there's a better word to describe it. Just the, the honor, of course, to win it at our, our home gym. Um, just incredibly lucky feeling. We were very fortunate this week to have several alumni come into our gym and explain to us about the first Moulton um, National Championship and their experience of winning that and um, how they avoid distractions and everything that we need to do to be successful in this tournament and we really wanted to go out there and uh, put up a good representation for all those teams in the past in the Moulton who did not have an opportunity to compete in a first class event like this at Springfield College to put forward. 
Um, they definitely laid the foundation. If it wasn't for them, um, we might not be, this group of guys might not be here because we all came here for the rich uh, volleyball tradition to play for Coach Sullivan and to play winning championship volleyball that they uh, did in the past. I agree completely. I mean, I have no words right now. Um, I guess the only thing we can really do is give thanks to everyone. So the alumni, our fans, our family, just give thanks. Unbelievable. It helps keep us focused, the coach says. What's in the boxes, guys? Do you know that's <laughs> hard? Watch. I lost mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take long. Watch. Well, coach, did you know the same tie as like a good luck thing? Is that superstitious? Or? Um, very superstitious. It was definitely in the same tie. Same parking spot, same feet, <laughs> same time, everything. So definitely. Mike, from where you were a year ago after uh, battling that illness and losing 60 pounds over the summer to come all the way back and rename the most outstanding player, can you just talk about what you're going through right now, what you're feeling? Yeah, well, I don't think I could have done it without everyone here. Uh, my team, my coach, my family, um, our strength trainers, just everyone asking me how I'm doing every day, every week, keeping me positive, telling me to be patient. I'll, I'll get back to where I was. And in the long run, it, it worked out, and I couldn't have done it without them. If I can interject, I just want to say that I think I was happier when Mike won the most outstanding player than when we won the national championship because nobody deserves this award more than him. He is the most overlooked player in the country, and the work he had to put in to come back from that was unbelievable. Anyone who saw him at that time and saw him the first day of school knew just how much hard work he put in and how much time he spent in the gym or everything. I mean, throughout the year, he's still getting treatment. It's just an unbelievable story of hard work and wanting to play championship volleyball for your team. There's no one else other than Mike's personality that, that could have done what Mike did. Uh, driven is what describes him, and there's, uh, I don't think there's another person. If you ask me if anyone else has gone through what Mike had gone through and if they could come back uh, like he did, and I, I would say the odds are very slim. But uh, Mike is uh, really driven. There's no one else that could have done what he did. Uh, for Mike and Greg, I mean, just talk about this is your third, technically your third national championship game you've played in. Talk about the roller coaster ride you're for both of you guys your three years here. You won a national championship uh, as freshmen, then lost last year, now uh, won again. So just talk about just the craziness of all these all these seasons. I think first. Yeah. I don't I wouldn't like to think we're getting comfortable with playing this. I think every year our work ethic gets harder and harder. Just because we want to end up like this every single year. Uh, we we met last night uh, as a group of starters and just talked about what our, our expectations were, tried to get over uh, all the, the anxiety, the nerves, and I felt we talked for an hour and a half, and doing so, I think, was the most positive meeting we've ever had. Um, we have a phrase on our team that um, mistakes not a mistake until you fail to correct it. Last year, we made a mistake, we weren't mentally prepared, and we let our guard down. This year, from day one, you know, went out to Hawaii, we got, we got slapped around, and we Realize right there, you know, when we get back, it's back to work. You know, we had a D3 game coming up like three days later, something like that. And that's when we knew, you know, it's the start of our season. It's time to turn it around, and um, nobody but this team could have done it. We were just, everybody made sacrifices, kills were set down to get hitting percentage up. And um, I can't remember the last game that we hit under 400 because of that. Um, and nobody's selfish, and um, I did not hear one person tell Keaton today and give me the ball. Because we have confidence in the other, we know wherever the ball's going, somebody's going to get the job done. Coach, I know you uh, you don't name captains, but when they said for the captains to come out, you went out and grabbed it. Was that kind of an unspoken thing, or what happened there? Was there actually we changed did? tradition this year? Every year is a different year, different formula, and uh, we we uh, named some captains after we came back from spring break. We had a match before spring break. We were a little a little down. We we, uh, we didn't play so well, and uh, we needed some more direction. So at that time. Uh, we named Michael and Greg our, our team captains, and we uh, but we don't let the other 18 off the hook too. They're still responsible for being our uh, portraying those characteristics that the captains need to portray. So it's just these guys were I guess more of a lead role in, in some things that we need to get done, and their role is responsible for being really good characteristic wise. Guys, early on in each set, it was back and forth. You know, never more than a one or two point lead either way. It seemed, especially in one and three, you guys were able to pull away. I know in game two you pulled away, they came back, but how were you guys able to pull away in the second half of each set? We looked to get our serve going and uh, kind of serve some good spots. Uh, we weren't the most jump serve aggressive team all year, but we, we really tried to locate some areas that would be effective for us to uh, to get them out of offense and slow them down a little bit. When they're in system, their firepower is unbelievable. 
Uh, I don't know if, if they had passed, you know, five more perfect passes. If we're sitting here right now, we're still probably playing. But uh, we just try to pick them apart and serve receive a little bit. And I think at that midpoint of each game, we got a couple of guys on a couple of runs that are making some, uh, turning some points, and that was that's kind of where we started building some momentum. I think it was just we expected it to be a back and forth game. Carter's an unbelievable team to have great depth like we do, and it was just nothing we didn't expect. So we look forward, you know, we look forward to that challenge and we embraced it. And uh, everybody made the sacrifice again. Pelly, first game all year, floats there, just doing something different today. He had two minutes to warm up today to do that today, and he did for the first time in the national championship. I mean, just every little thing like that, Angel too. So I mean, just team came together during those uh, tough times. Coach, April 29th normally holds a special place in your heart as your daughter's birthday. Can yeah. you just talk about now, uh, April 29th, we'll have a different uh, memory for you, uh, winning your first ever NCAA National Championship. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll make two cakes. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is uh, probably like Keaton said, not digested yet, but, uh, you know, this team had to figure out a whole new formula. We were playing in a different ball game this year with the NCAA Division Three National Championship, and the qualification for that tournament was different than years past in qualifying for the Molten. And uh, we, in years past, maybe didn't put so much emphasis into uh, needing to win in January or early February, but we knew this year that we had to win all our matches to be able to qualify as an at-large bid. And so, like I said, the process was totally different. And, uh, man, it's, it, I think it really helped us because we needed to prepare really aggressively in February, and we, we started being able to prepare uh, with, with great content and driven and, and, and driven and focusedly in a focused manner early on, and I think that just got us to where we could turn and switch on it sometimes and, uh, and get ready to play at a high level really quickly. So, yeah, it was a really unique year, and uh, we'll evaluate and see some things we can do better and, uh, and, and get better in a couple of categories. But uh, these guys embraced a whole new formula. They did it great. They did a great job of it, and we're really happy we're able to be successful with it. Coach, what's your impression on the whole tournament besides the national championship? Really proud to be a Springfield College coach right now. Um, you know, uh, I think that Springfield College set the bar pretty high for the inaugural national NCAA Division III tournament in terms of uh, everything we did to support the tournament, make it a first class event. Uh, we saw the facility being changed with the new steps and the new carpet and the new paint job and all the new flowers outside. We saw at our banquet that we sat down and there were 10 things for the guys to take away from that with them. We saw every detail possible with some lights in the ceilings, with some top of the cupcakes with a really special, I don't know what it was, a, a symbol of the championship. Um, we saw every detail covered. We saw our athletic department supporting our men's volleyball program for a small school and had every person in the athletic department focus on running this championship in a, in a, in a great manner. is uh, is an honor uh, to coach Springfield College. who's really proud in terms of what we did as a host and what our players did as, uh, as, as people and student athletes. It's unbelievable right now. What's the process, Charlie, in, in future years? Is it team has to be up there, or is it bid for? Can you get it back again, or is that something that's probably going to have to be spread out, spread around? I uh, get the bid. We need to win a lot of matches. Our, our win loss percentage needs to be really high in Division Three and our region first. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to go cross over to the Western Region and win those matches. And it's probably going to be the same thing next year. We, we just can't afford to take a minute off or an hour off to. Where we weren't ready to go, and we didn't play our best, and that affected our postseason chances. So we were really fortunate this year. Honestly, if we had, you know, if we had won, lost one more match, I don't know if we can get into the championship. So um, it was intense. It was really intense. It wasn't a lot of sleep. <laughs> so guys did a great job. Coach, do you think playing then this season without having a guaranteed bid? You know, in the past it was the winner of you guys, junior at NYU, would go to the Molten. Yep. Having to earn an at large, do you think that had you guys more ready to play today? Yeah, I think I think that preparation. Having to be good all season long was good for today. Thank you. Mike, uh, for those who uh, weren't aware of your illness, what was that last? Was it last summer? Yes. Yeah. And what was it? Ulcerative colitis. It's a milder form of Crohn's disease. Yeah. Okay. So you lost 60 pounds, and that was a year ago? Um, yeah, right around this time last year, I was hospitalized for two and a half weeks. I missed the last part of the season and the end of school. Right. So I spent all summer um, finishing my schoolwork and putting the weight back on. Can you just talk about the process of putting that weight back on? Um, what was the timetable for you to get that weight back? Uh, well, I got home uh, right around, uh, I think it was early May, and I just looked at my calendar and I, I saw I had four months to get back where I was. Uh, my parents bought me a gym membership. Uh, and I was there three hours every day. Um, once I got my medicine, I was able to start uh, eating 
because I couldn't, I had a restricted diet. So um, I didn't stop eating once I started. <laughs> uh, uh, from then on, I mean, I just kept that up and I really uh, just monitored symptoms again. Um, I go back home every two months for more medicine. So I just, I'm really trying to be aware of uh, my health and not try to uh, cover it up so much as I did last year. Congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you.